level of Deputy Ministers of Foreign Affairs. And the second one took place in Tehran last year. And now we just completed the third meeting in this format. We discussed directions of further cooperation in most different areas, especially the spheres of policy, security, combating the threats of terrorism, drug trafficking, Second area of our discussion was economy, establishing ties in energy sphere and solving transport and logistics problems. So energy and transport are two additional important areas of cooperation. And everybody was in favor, everybody spoke in favor of boosting our humanitarian ties exchange of creative teams, theaters and so on. And we discussed a lot the situation in the Middle East, speaking in favor of de-escalation, stopping targeted strikes against civilian population, against UN employees and peacekeepers in Lebanon. Once again, as we always do when we convene in this format, we confirmed that the doors of this platform are always open for Georgia, and we hope that in due time Georgia will be able to join the organization. In all these areas, we have agreed and we expect the meetings on all these topics to take place over the next year. We have mechanisms of daily contacts in every country that took place in this 3 plus 3 format today. There are contact persons in charge of making progress in these areas. Well, let me stop here. What are the issues of regional security in, in the Southern Caucasus? Well, the biggest threat is that players not from this region are trying to dictate their own conditions, try to hoist their own schemes here, enforce their own schemes aimed not at settling the region's problems in the interests of all the countries located here, but aimed at promoting NATO-centric formats, develop block-based processes and drive wedges, as we say, between neighboring countries and use their capabilities as leverage. Just look at what happened after Georgia passed laws on transparency of foreign financing of non-governmental organizations and laws aimed at preventing LGBT propaganda. And immediately EU responded by saying that Georgia is no more is no longer the priority partner for joining the EU because Georgia is allegedly violating European values. Well, if European values are in financing disruptive activities and promoting LGBT, then this is just blunt admission of what these European values are. Besides, there are still problems between Armenia and Azerbaijan. We have talked about this as well today. Both Russia, Turkey and Iran suggested that Yerevan and Baku use this platform to complete their work on the peace treaty. And we reminded them of the developments that had been created partially between Russia, Azerbaijan and Armenia on the level of ministers of foreign affairs and deputy prime ministers in preparing to delimit the state border 
and a whole number of other topics. There are issues related to normalization between Armenia and Turkey. Russia made great efforts to help the situation normalize. Our Armenian counterparts taken a time out. They think that First, it is necessary for them to talk directly with Turkey to see what to do next. I think this has to do with the Armenian-Azerbaijani normalization. So we suggested to see, to view these issues comprehensively and urge the two parties to reach an agreement as soon as possible. And we agreed to provide assistance if the directly involved parties require that. Coming back to Georgia, I think one of the biggest challenges is the West's attempt to open a second front against Russia. I mean, once again, sparkling up and destabilizing the situation in Abkhazia and South Ossetia. And once again, escalate relationships between Georgia and Abkhazia. So all the risks we have here are linked with the West's attempts to enforce as much influence here as possible. First of all, to undermine capabilities, the possibilities of equal cooperation of local states with the Russian Federation. Mr. Lavrov, do you regret that Tbilisi refused to take part in today's session for this 3 plus 3 format? could be a great foundation for direct Russian-Georgian contacts. Do you think a time is going to come for Georgia to be part of this format? Well, as soon as they decide they want to be part of it, they can come here and take their seat. There is always a seat reserved for them, and the doors are always open for them. And as for our contacts, we have our contacts in Tbilisi, we have our section there, Swiss Embassy, and our diplomats work there, and they can discuss issues in trade and tourism and humanitarian contacts with their Georgian counterparts. Анастасия Домбицкая, коммерсант Сергей Викторович, из существующих ныне площадок, где обсуждается армяно-азербайджанский... Мистер Лавров, в платформах, currently devoted to discussing the Armenian-Azerbaijani conflict, which one do you think is the most viable? I think the platform that will help them reach an agreement is the most viable. As we suggested them today, if they choose to use the, the 3 plus 3 platform, which only seems natural, because it unites the neighbors of Armenia and Azerbaijan, but then it's up to Baku and Yerevan to decide. Mr. Lavrov, amid publication of the so-called Zelensky peace plan, it has become known that Biden refused to meet with Zelensky in Germany. Do you think these two facts are interconnected? And can we expect any changes in the West's policy regarding Ukraine on the threshold of America's elections? Well, I really have trouble guessing what drives President Biden and President Zelensky. Russia's position is very well known. It was laid down by President Putin this June in his speech in front of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Let me just remind you that every time Russia shows goodwill and supports specific negotiations and agreements, all these agreements get undermined by Ukraine. Starting with year 2022, when the agreement between the president and the opposition was broken, 
And then there were the Minsk agreements, which the Ukrainian part admitted they, had, they were never going to adhere to. And then in Istanbul, in April 2022, there was an agreement to stop the hostilities and settle the situation between Russia and Ukraine on the basis of fair security guarantees, both from the point of view of Russia's interests and Ukraine's interests. And that agreement was undermined as well by the Kiev regime. And every time the agreements that took decades to reach were broken by the Ukrainian part, Ukrainian, Ukraine has lost territories every time Ukraine becomes smaller and smaller. So what President Putin told in June this year must be viewed from the point of view of reality on the ground. Our position is clear. No admission to NATO, neutral status, solving the problems of Russian-speaking and Russian population, whose rights have been violated and they had been deprived of any right to do anything in their own language. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church was suppressed and oppressed. And of course, we are not accepting any variant when Ukraine retains an opportunity to be used by the West in its interests. Reality on the ground will be taken into account as the West promotes its concepts and is divided between supporting Zelensky and realizing the hopelessness of this strategy. This victory plan essentially summarizes the essence of what Zelensky wants. He wants to win, he wants to deliver Russia's strategic defeat on the battlefield. This is the difference in approaches, psychologically. Back in February 2014, when President Yunikovych, the ex-president of Ukraine, uh, made an agreement uh, it involved uh, an election and in, in several months and until that time a government of national unity was supposed to be established but then they said congratulations we now have the government of the victors of the winners so they've been striving towards, towards victory for a long time but they still have very little to show for it. Now, Minister Lavrov, is uh, the Russian foreign ministry aware of the uh, secret uh, addendum to the Zelensky's victory plan and also what is uh, the reaction of the West towards these initiatives? Well, we're not interested in any secret documents or addendums. And as for the reaction of the West, we haven't uh, really asked them. We don't talk to them about such things. Um, but you can see their reaction on all the pages of newspapers, uh, online, in so on social media, on television screens. Uh, I can say only one thing. There are leaks. And according to one of those leaks, the main thing for Zelensky right now is to gain new arms, more weapons. The West has uh, seen this scenario as unacceptable for quite a long time now. They know that this will lead to great uh, negative consequences for the West, losses for the West. So the West responded to Zelensky speaking something about the economic issues and as for the so-called leaks, this so-called secret addendum to the victory plan, uh, Zelensky allegedly pledged all Ukraine's natural resources to his Western masters, thereby selling Ukraine to the West, essentially. And when allegedly it also speaks about security, and according to those alleged leaks, uh, it says that Ukraine's army, after the their victory, will be ready to station its uh, soldiers uh, in Europe and replace American soldiers there defending Europe. So 
He essentially sells all Ukraine's resources, and on the other hand, he also uses his country, he wants to use his country as a mercenary army. Minister Lavrov, on Thursday in Brussels, uh, President Zelensky again uh, came, uh, used a blackmail. So they want to uh, go back to the issues that they discussed before, so, uh, talking about uh, nuclear weapons. What is your reaction to his words about nuclear weapons and ability to create them? Well, this is madness, of course. Uh, nothing will come out of it. Nothing good will come out of it. But I think that he already went back on his words. And he, I think he, he woke up uh, the next day and he realized uh, the nonsense that he's been saying. Um, I think we could go on analyzing the words of this uh, person for a long time, but his team and he himself already know the futility of of that. Sir, uh, so, Norm, one more question. What is uh, RT uh, Arabic? Uh, vigil for the efforts needed to prevent the Middle East uh, uh, from descending into a full-scale regional war. And what plan to take? If the conflict escalated uh, into a direct confrontation between Israel and Iran, given the potential negative uh, impact on international stability. You know, we have been talking about this all the time, and our position is well known. We stand for an immediate ceasefire, an immediate cessation of all violence. We fundamentally condemn all terrorist acts, all terrorist attacks, just like we did after October the 7th attacks. And we also condemn all actions that involve uh, collective punishment, uh, un completely unchallenged and uh, and indiscriminate. Now, Lebanese people and the Syrians and the, and the people of Iraq are all suffering from all that right now. There's a practice of, practice of political assassinations that's currently used. And this is uh, something that the, neg the, the international law frowns upon, uh, to put it mildly. So, the idea right now is to engage Iran into hostilities, and so that will lead in turn to the involvement of the United States in the conflict in the Middle East. I think uh, there are some parallels you could draw with President Zelensky really with this situation, uh, because President Zelensky is trying to do exactly the same. Uh, he's basically using his soldiers uh, as mercenaries and trying to engage the West into his war. So I think that now the West's plans for this situation for, Ukra for the Ukraine war, they are understood. Uh, very well by their own responsible, more responsible politicians in the West. They know what's happening. So, after, anyway, Russia stands for a ceasefire, immediate ceasefire. Of course, when we see that UN officials, uh, UN uh, aid workers are being attacked, those who provide humanitarian aid, now that is a very difficult situation. And when peacekeepers in Lebanon are being asked to move away because uh, Israel is going to attack areas that they hold, this is completely out of uh, out of hand. This is completely inappropriate. I hope that the UN will stand up for its workers and protect them. We, on our on our part, uh, believe that uh, the UN Security Council must go forward with this. Uh, uh, demands as quickly as possible. Thank you.